Howdy, JG Certified here and welcome to the video. Uh, this is converting an ATX supply back into an AT supply and then testing it with a slightly sacrificial motherboard before testing it with the uh, new 486 or newbie as he's now known. Uh, things didn't entirely go to plan but that always happens and what would the entertainment be if it all went perfectly to plan? Uh, the first issue that I really ran into was when I first turned it on with the, with the test motherboard, all I got out of the power supply was a horrible squealing noise and not much else. Uh, that ultimately turned out to be the power good line, I think. It's supposed to be 5 volts on both AT and ATX, but there may be slight differences there. As soon as I cut the power good line, the test board fired up not a problem. Uh, so then I transferred everything and hooked it up to Newbie to test. And without power good line, nothing happened, that board wouldn't post. So the newer board that I was testing against uh, obviously didn't require power good, but the older board did. Uh, power good, however, is just 5 volts, so I simply tied the 5 volt rail to, to the power good line. Uh, that actually allowed the board to start up, but there's, there's still something not right with that because on the 486 board at the moment the PCI slots aren't working. I'm unsure whether it's the difference to the power supply or if it's the difference uh, with the power goods so I'll just have to pull out Gramps' power supply and just connect the leads to the 486 at some point and just test. I may have just... it may not be a good enough power supply that I used as the testing supply. Uh, to replace the power switch I just connected the old toggle switch across the green and black leads on the on the ATX supply to simulate uh, that's in quotes I know you can't see that but simulate a hardware power switch uh, so yeah I've got to do a lot more testing and see if I can figure out if I've got a slightly unhappy board or if I have a slightly unhappy supply I can always uh, do the conversion to a different power supply uh, the, the only difference really with ATX supplies is they added 3.3 volt lines. The older supplies still have the negative 5 and negative 12 lines. Uh, modern supply generally doesn't have negative 5 as that's only required for ISA compatibility. So I'll just do some testing on that and see how I go. Uh, the other thing with this motherboard is the CMOS battery is dead. Unfortunately it's got one of those uh, Dallas real-time clock clones and it's not socketed it's soldered which is going to make it rather tricky to remove but it's just one of those things so uh, I'll let you finish watching this video and I'll uh, speak to you again at the end
Oh well, I'll do some video when I pull out Gramps' supply just to test this board. But at least it does somewhat work and all the onboard stuff works. Uh, the old, old retro hard drive, I'll probably put in something older than this as this has been upgraded since it was a 386 and as that drive came from a 386 it would be more suited to a 386. Uh, it, it can just stay in its yellowed case for now. I don't really have another one at the moment, so that case will have to do. Uh, that's it for now with this machine, but I will be revisiting it soon. Uh, when it comes time to the OS, I'm going to take popular vote on the comments on this video. Uh, so as to whether I go DOS Win 3.1 or Win 95, whichever has the most comments on this video will be the OS I install on the machine. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.